Hello everyone, how are you today? You are all welcome back to my channel, Apostle Paul Taiwo YouTube channel, if today is your first time here, I want to say a very big thank you and God bless you. Endeavor to click on the subscription button and click on the notification icon so you can be notified whenever I drop a new video onto the channel or whenever I come up for prayers. I pray that this video you are about to listen to will bless your heart and bring you into repentance and strengthen your bonds with God and with His Holy Spirit in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Endeavor to like this video and share it to your loved ones, God bless you. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 4 17-18 Then we that are alive, that are left, shall together with them be caught up in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 18 Wherefore comfort one another with these words. By the grace of God, I would like to reveal the first encounter that the Lord gave me. It happened in a prayer camp. We were spending time in prayer in the camp seeking the face of the Lord. As the prayer continued, I began to feel that I was not fine. But I could not tell why I was feeling like that. I did not know that the Lord was about to visit me and this feeling was the foreshadowing. As this feeling continued on that day in the evening, at 11 past in the night I went to sleep. I thought I was not feeling well because of the hustle and bustle of the day. When I tried to sort out my condition that day, it only got worse. Then something happened to me as I was sleeping. I was sleeping when I saw that I came out of my body and I sat on my bed. To my surprise, there was a character standing not far from where I was sitting on the bed. I noticed that his feet were not touching the ground. He was standing in space. When I looked carefully at his feet, I saw that he had holes in his feet, and I saw that blood was flowing from his feet. When I saw these feet with holes in blood, I recognized that person. It was surely the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I lifted my head and eyes in order to observe his face. It was then I saw the face of the Lord for the first time. When I was beholding the Lord where he appeared and stood in the room, I looked at his holes in the feet with blood. I saw that the Lord was crying with tears of blood in his eyes. Beloved, his eyes was like blood as I was observing him. Then he said, follow me. Immediately, I followed the Lord. I saw that we were not walking. In fact, we moved from one place to another instantly. Actually, I landed in a bare land which had no beginning and no end. I was standing there. And when I cast my eyes around, I could not see anything. But as I kept looking in the horizon, finally I saw the sea. I began to observe the sea on the horizon when suddenly I saw that the water of this sea had come together with the cloud. And besides the sea, I saw a very high mountain. Suddenly, I saw a huge animal coming out of the sea. This beast was huge. The palm of the feet of the animal was as big as the base of the palm tree. His eyes were red. He was resting around the mountain and lying down. I was observing the beast when suddenly I saw the cloud descending from the mountain. Immediately after the cloud, I saw a radiant angel of the Lord descending in the cloud, and he was holding a scroll. At that moment I saw the angel stretching the scroll to the beast and he said, Don't deceive them for the Lord is coming soon. The Lord is coming. After the angel of Lord has spoken I saw the cloud everywhere in the sky. In fact, the rapture of the church was taking place all over the world. The Lord showed me how the graves were opened and the tombs were torn apart and people were leaving and rising in the air. Then I saw a driver on the road driving a car. Suddenly, he was raptured and there was a traffic accident. I saw people rising. I noticed that very few people were raptured on that day. And I said to myself, the rapture is taking place. Why am I not rising? I am left behind. I wonder why am I not rising? 
and I tried to jump, but I could not go up. I began to weep and I wept a lot. I was crying when suddenly I saw a man of God that preached the true word of God, but they were left behind. And I saw church leaders and members that I thought were holy. They were also left behind. They did not make it. They were seated on the floor in lamentation and they were weeping to the extent that you could not hear their voices anymore. Then I saw two people who were neighbors consoling each other and people were hugging one another in emotion because of what has happened to them. Even people who don't talk to each other were hugging one another and they forgot their conflict. Then I heard a voice sounding in the sky and saying, you knew that you could love one another. You could have affection for one another, but you decided not to do so. Now it is too late. You are hugging one another in affection and love. Why now? Why have you waited for me to come back and get my church for you to show love to one another? Beloved brother and sister, if you have not learned to show love and affection, you must learn it now. You must learn to love your neighbor, whatever his personality. Love is one of the things that will help us make it on that day of the trumpet. They were men of God that were left behind. They talked to each other but in their hearts, they did not love one another. They were in conflict. Because of the gravity of that day. Hate and conflict were forgotten and they hugged one another in affection. Suddenly I saw the radiant angel of the Lord that was holding the scroll. He came down and began to reveal to these people why they were left behind. The angel came to a lady and said to her, You serve the Lord well but the artificial hair that is in your head does not belong to us, but the enemy. There is no place in the kingdom for such a thing. He goes to another who put eyelashes on and said, These things do not belong to us. The angel said to the other man, You did well for the Lord, but you talk too much. You talk about men of God far too much. He went to another and said, You did well, but you were murmuring. Beloved, the things that the angel mentioned, which stopped the people from rising at the sound of the trumpet seemed like little things to me, just little things. But these little things stopped them from rising, things like rings, necklaces, chains. These people that were left behind were saying to the angel, if I knew, if only I knew, I would have got rid of them. I did not know that these could stop me from rapture. Beloved, I hope you will not be among those who say I did not know, because the Lord said, wherever I am testifying, it will be recorded and there will be no excuse. Suddenly, I saw the sky opening and I saw a beautiful staircase descending from the sky, though it did not reach the ground. I cannot describe how the staircase was built for it was silver with gold. It was hanging in space. I saw millions of angels coming down from the golden stairs and they were gathering the millions of God's children that were rising in the air while the trumpet was sounding. I saw that there was a brightening and radiant man who stood in heaven. I saw that the brightness and radiance of the man who was the Lord was being transferred to each of the saints that was in the air. Every time the brightness and radiance of the Lord transferred to a saint, the angel made him climb the golden staircase leading him to the Lord, who stood before a beautiful building of gold. When all the children of God climbed the golden staircase, I saw the portal that was opened and the firmament was closed. Beloved, on that day, even the children were selected. If you fail to teach your child the way of the Lord, that is no guarantee, because the enemy is also battling to reap the souls of the children. You must be serious about the instruction of the children because the Lord was selective. We were still in this camp for prayer. I was sleeping when I came out of my body. Immediately I saw the Lord by my side, and he asked me to follow him. Immediately, I saw that we had instantly landed in a place, which was a cemetery. I was observing the place and I saw that there were many graves in this cemetery, but there was a particular grave of a person that was dressed very well when he died. Immediately I saw the Lord Jesus Christ standing by the side of the grave of this corpse that was well dressed, and he said to me, My daughter, look at the dress of the person lying on the grave. When I looked again, I said that the person was indeed well dressed and he was a man. The Lord Jesus Christ asked, My daughter, what kind of personality is lying in this grave? When I looked at the corpse I knew by revelation that he was an important personality during his life on earth. I told the Lord, this man was a rich man during this life. The Lord said, my daughter, you answered well. As the Lord stood by the side of the grave, 
suddenly I saw a box that appeared in this cemetery, and it was huge and had a cover. And the Lord asked me to open it. The box was were so big that I knew that I will not be able to lift it up or open it. I said, Lord, I can't do it. The Lord said again, my daughter, open it. I tried to open it. I saw that I was able to open this huge box. And when it was opened, beloved, I saw all kinds of currencies of the world. Jesus asked me, my daughter, do you see all this money? It belonged to the man in the grave. It's his money, but he has died and left the money he worked for. Jesus said to me, my daughter, I want you to take all the money from this box and put them in his grave. Actually, the money box itself was already bigger than the grave. And when I considered the quantity of these currencies and the size of the grave, I said in my heart, all this money won't fit in the grave. But the Lord insisted and said, my daughter, I want you to get this box inside this man's grave. Beloved, how I was able to move that huge box, I don't know. And I tried to push the huge box inside the grave, but it could not enter. This box was bigger than the grave itself. Then I lifted my head to tell the Lord and make him understand that this huge box of money would not enter the grave. But the Lord was looking at me steadily and I saw that he was weeping and tears of blood were dropping from his eyes. The Lord was trying to tell me that this man had worked hard during his life to accumulate all this money, but he has died and has left the very money that he worked so hard all his life. He went to the grave, leaving the money back. For all come from dust and all return to dust. Immediately I saw a beautiful vehicle appearing at the cemetery. The Lord said, look at his vehicle. It's a Range Rover, new model. The Lord said, the car belonged to this man as well. And I want you to push the car inside his grave. I said, Lord, I cannot push the car in the grave because we don't put cars in the grave when people die. But the Lord insisted. I said, Lord, how can one man push such a heavy car? The Lord said, don't you know that with me, all things are possible. Now push the car. Beloved, I don't know where the strength came. But I was enabled to push this car by myself. When I tried to push it into this man's grave, I saw that it was too big and it could not enter. When I turned around to tell the Lord that it cannot enter the grave, I saw that he was weeping again and his tears were blood. The Lord is weeping for humanity and his church. They have set their hearts on the material and passing things of this world failing to secure salvation. Suddenly I saw a huge and very beautiful building landing in the cemetery which belonged to the man that was lying in the grave. The Lord said, My daughter, I want you to push this man's building inside his grave. While I was wondering how can I push a building inside the grave, I saw that I was already pushing this building by the strength of the Lord. When I pushed it close to his grave, it could not enter this man's grave. Immediately the Lord Jesus Christ said to me, My daughter, now you see what my children and humanity are chasing. These are the things that humanity and my children are seeking. My children are not seeking me anymore. There is no more time but my children are not seeking me. My children are so interested in these passing material things to the extent that even their pastors are also involved in the search of these material things and because of these material things, and the pursuit of the things of this world there is no more love and care for one another in the church. When a brother is failing, no one cares. When a sister is killed, no one bothers, not even the pastor. Jesus said, when the rich man who denigrated Lazarus died, he could not take all the wealth and possessions with him. He could not carry his building, his wealth and belonging. Likewise, this man that is laying in the grave, during his life on earth, he did not care to seek me. All his effort was put into acquiring these possessions and material goods of this world. And when he died, he could not take all these properties and possessions with him. You will tell my children to seek me and they should not be going after the things of this world because none of these things will bring them to me. Jesus was really weeping with tears of blood. Our Lord Jesus Christ was weeping because his children are lost, seeking the passing things of this world that will be consumed in fire. Jesus said to me, It is true that I bless my children with these things because it is not a sin to have them. But today most of my children do not wait for me to bless them. They force their way to get these things. And when they get these material things, their hearts go after these things, 
and they reject me their Lord. Jesus said, You will tell my children if their hearts are attached to these passing things, I will destroy them. And you will tell men of God and pastors, they've disappointed me. If they don't repent, I will destroy them. The Bible says in Matthew 6 33-34, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Today has enough trouble of its own. Suddenly, I saw that we have changed location in a blink of the eye. And we landed at another place where I saw huge coals of fire burning, and there were people inside the fires that were burning. Jesus said, Look at the destination of these people who are after the passing things of this world. The people you see in the fire are the ones whose hearts were set on the goods of this world. You will go and tell my children and pastors to put me as the priority of their hearts, not the things of this world. Their goods and possessions will not save them from this fire. Tell my people not to attach themselves to the things of this world. Let their hearts be attached to me, I must be their priority. But if they don't repent, this fire will be their destination. Colossians 3 1-3 Therefore, since you have been raised with Christ, strive for the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Then we left the people who were burning in the coal and flame of fire. Suddenly, I saw that we were instantly in a hall where I saw pastors using human blood and ritual sacrifices to advance their ministries. Jesus said, My daughter, you see how dirty my church is, how dirty my church has become. They no more seek my Holy Spirit for power, but they have turned their back on the Holy Spirit and they are using human blood to grow their ministry. Then the Lord took me to a church where I saw pastors that commit fornication with members of their church, and I saw elders that commit sexual immorality with members of the church. I saw youth committing fornication among themselves. I saw leaders and musicians in sexual immorality. Jesus said, Are you seeing all this? This is the state of my church. In the end time, these leaders have failed my church. You will tell my children, if they don't repent, I will destroy them. Then the Lord took me to another church, where he showed me another group of Christians who were seated in the church hall. They were snubbing and ignoring each other and there was silence in the church for no one was talking to the person close to him. These people were Christians, but they were enemies and they don't talk to each other for they were in conflict and animosity. In this end time, there are many children of God who have enemies in the church and their family and the workplace. And they have people that they don't talk to. Beloved, if you have an issue with a brother or sister in the church or in your family, if you don't talk to someone who you consider an enemy, I am here to warn you to repent, pursue peace with all men, and the sanctification without which no one will see the Lord. Hebrews 12 14 Then the Lord took me to another church, where I saw people seated. This was a church but I saw that people were talking to one another about other members. It's like the entire church was gossiping and talking about one another. Jesus said, you will tell them to repent from gossip otherwise I will destroy them. Then the Lord took me to another place which was also a church. I saw people dressed fashionably in the latest trends and the women were adorned with vanities, earrings, and jewelry. Jesus said, Look at these people. They are building another image that I don't recognize yet they are already my image but they're trying to build another image. Then Jesus took me to a bar and said, Look at these people dancing. What is the difference between the people dancing in this bar and the people in my church who have adorned their bodies with makeup and vanity? I said, there is no difference. Jesus said, this is the state of my church. A lot of people see themselves as my children, but what they do is the will of the devil. Tell my children, if they don't repent from the worldly adornment and vanities, I will destroy them. Beloved, when the Lord was speaking like this, I could see that he was serious. Then the Lord took me to another church, where I saw two barrels. In the first barrel was clean and pure water. But in the second barrel, there was dirty water. Then I saw the man of God coming to get the water for the sheep. To my surprise, he took the dirty water instead of the clean and pure water. He went to give dirty water to the sheep. I saw that the sheep that drank dirty water became weak, and they started to fall down as if they were dying. 
There were also sheep that refused to drink the dirty water and they went out of the sheepfold. Those sheep that refused to drink the water were also weak but they went out. Jesus said, My word is the truth. Men of God are supposed to give my children living water, but they have rejected the living water and they are fetching for my children dirty water, which they are giving my children causing death in my house. Those sheep who refuse to drink dirty water and have left the church, by God's grace, they will find a good church where living water will be given to them. Jesus said, This is what the pastors have done to my church. Most of the pastors have disappointed me. These preachers and the various prophets have disappointed me. You will tell them to repent or I will destroy them. Then the Lord took me to a place under the tree where I saw various men of God around that tree. As I stood with the Lord Jesus Christ I also noticed that he was simultaneously tied to this tree. Beloved, I saw that these pastors had attached the Lord to the tree and they were beating and lashing him. I watched these pastors beating him. When they got tired, they left and another group of men of God came. They began to beat him. When they were tired, they left and I saw another group of pastors coming and they started to beat the Lord. It's like the cycle was continuous. As this continued, I saw the blood flowing from his feet and hands. I asked the Lord, why are pastors beating you like this? I thought it was soldiers, but I didn't see soldiers, I saw men of God. I saw Jesus crying and saying, men of God have disappointed me. Most of them have disappointed me. They are beating me with the sins that they are committing in my house. And look at my hand. I was stunned and I said, the Lord had died more than 2000 years ago. His wounds should have been healed. But why are his wounds fresh? The Lord said, when you have a wound, how many days it takes to be healed? Normally a wound would be healed in weeks but because of your sin, my wounds are fresh. I came to die for you but you are hurting me with your sin. Every sin you commit makes my wound fresh and because of your sin, my wound will never be healed. When I looked at the Lord's wounds, it was like the day he died on the cross. Then the Lord lined up pastors in their clerical garments. I saw that there were pastors whose clerical garments were stained in blood. Others had their clerical garments spotted. Only a minority of pastors had clean clerical garments. The Lord said, the pastors whose clerical garments are stained in blood, do my work with human sacrifices and rituals. They have evil spirits and I have not called them yet they claimed I have called them and they are leading the sheep astray. Some of these pastors I have called them but they have rejected my Holy Spirit. I expected the heretic and apostate church to come and copy from the church where my spirit is operating. But today it is the pastors who have received the Holy Spirit that have become occultic pastors, turning their backs on the Holy Spirit. They have introduced the things of the world in the church. Tell them to repent or I will destroy them. Among these pastors, I saw leaders that we know very well, but I will not reveal their names. The Lord said, the dressing of the children of God today does not reflect their kingdom. And among the children of the kingdom, there is hate and conflict. Jesus mentioned denominational conflicts and fights. He said, normally these pastors should have one mind that is to prepare and take my children to the kingdom of heaven, yet pastors rise against one another. Then suddenly we changed location and we landed in a beautiful landscape where there was green grass. I saw an angel holding a book and writing everything. He was the angel of record. The Lord said, on that day of judgment, there will be no excuse. Everything is recorded in the record of heaven. Whenever you testify, everything will be recorded. Then the vision ended.